in uh, the Cotswolds. They're beautiful Cotswolds. All right, and I'm going to do a sketch looking down this street. I want to talk for just a second about what an artist has to do. All human beings, when they're going through life, some scene, let's say landscape in this case, but it's every kind of scene, will appeal to them. It just draws at some subconscious level. It attracts them. Uh, most people have a camera, so they pick up their phone and shoot a picture with their phone camera. Uh, an artist has to process at a deeper level. For instance, let's look at the street. I'm going to frame this this view, this scene. Hang on, hang on. Oh, my phone's not quite going to cooperate. I'm, I'm, I'm just shooting with my phone here, as you can probably tell. All right, that, that's cl <laughs> close enough. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, something like that. And an artist has to not only be attracted to a scene, he or she needs to understand specifically, precisely, with detail, what is it in that scene that is drawing drawing them or speaking to them. Now, let me back out from this a little bit more. Yeah, come on, come on. There we go. All right, so wide angle. So some of the things you can, probably the one thing that's catching your eye more than anything else is this uh, Tudor-style half-timber uh, house right here with the, the white and the dark. Why does that draw, why does that appeal to us? Because human beings like contrast, our eyes automatically. This is the beautiful lighting, and I couldn't ask for any more beautiful a moment. Uh, another part of this scene that is really draw, appealing to me is way down there at the end of the street, the sun, it's just going behind a cloud right now, but the sun that was hitting the fronts of those buildings in the distance, while the buildings up close here on the right were in shade. Again, that interplay of light and dark, light and dark, uh, is, is what we like. Now, I wonder if I just start sketching up here, can you, uh, you're not going to see a lot, trust me. Once again, just guys, as I've been doing the last couple days, um, I'm using big fat lead pencil, love this tool, and I always begin a drawing by scribbling in very loosely a border. All right, now let's, and of course I'm drawing, as always, holding, holding my pencil side saddle that keeps me from getting bogged down in details. So I'm thinking, oh, by the way, one other little, one other detail that I, uh, really appeals to me in this scene is the the pots on the top of the chimneys. I mean, that's just classic, you know, merry old England. It's the, the chimneys like that. That's a, that's a real key element. So I'm for sure going to make sure that I frame the, uh, the, the sketch so we get that in it. But one of the reasons for drawing this border is uh, <laughs> one sort of funny, silly reason is if in the course of doing your painting or sketch you discover that you're off a little bit. See, I have a little bit of cheating room here because I can fudge the drawing a little bit up, down, left, to right because I drew a border and I'm not drawing all the way to the edges. Now here's the more important reason why to draw a border. The reason is when you draw a the sound, this is counterintuitive, so put on your counterintuitive thinking cap, okay? Hello, gang. Hello, Monique. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for your chat. I look forward to checking those out later. Whenever you or I draw on a blank piece of paper, this is counterintuitive. Hang on. We tend to ignore the borders of the paper. We know they're there. We know we can't draw out here in the air. I don't mean that. But we often don't, when we just draw on a sheet of paper, it's as if the borders are floating in space and they're not really there. When you go ahead at the beginning and draw a, board, draw a border, now you're thinking compositionally. Now you're thinking, oh, I have to fill this space. I think this comes from grade school days when we had a piece of paper and we'd just pick up our pencil and start scribbling anything anywhere on the page. Are you with me? So we wouldn't, we wouldn't be thinking compositionally. We don't do that in second grade. <laughs> but now that you're an artist, you need to think about my art. Let's get enough talking. Let's go back to to uh, quick sketching. Oh, there's so much in here that is, that is so lovely. Um, oh, and of course, the, the hill, the dark uh, tree-covered hill and grassy hill in the background is also a, a key element in this, in this scene. And of course, 
the, the winding road, the shadows on the road. I'm going to go ahead and just telegraph, communicate to myself. This stage of the drawing process, of the sketching, I call this sketching really, this stage of the sketching process is almost like taking notes. It's like, to use the term, I'm telegraphing to myself, drawing. I'm not capturing it. I'm just throwing myself little hints like, oh yeah, yeah, don't forget that, don't forget that these buildings are dark. And, uh, and the, the light is over here, things like that. Don't forget, oh yeah, don't forget that the hill up here is dark. Now you, yeah. can you, <laughs> I don't know if I can, it's extremely messy. Same thing is true of sketching. Now, just in case you're wondering, yeah, but what are you going to do with all those ugly lines? <laughs> Fear not. Now, I could rub it with my with my finger. I do have fingers, and they rub perfectly fine. But they also have oil in them, and rubbing the oily fingers on your paper may cause the paper to yellow prematurely, like in 10 or 15 years. I don't want to do that. So I do have a blending stub. And I just wanted to, to answer the question, what am I going to do with all those, with all those lines that, um, that aren't a part of the drawing? Well, there's one of the things I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to smear them all out. Now, I can still see, barely, but I can still see the lines that I put in there earlier. Now, I'll finish this real short broadcast with uh, just one more tip for you. Now I have a page, and, and some of you go, yuck, it's all gray. And I go, yeah, isn't that cool? It's all gray. Because what does that do? That allows, now I've got a kneaded eraser in my hand. Now I can start drawing light into dark. I was doing dark on light. Now I'm doing light and dark. And throughout the course of this drawing, I will, in fact, be going back and forth, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, just the way I do in a painting process. Isn't that cool? So a uh, little bit of light, and I'm going to come back to a little bit of dark. And yes, I'm not. I, if I sat here for two hours, which would be absolutely delightful, of course the sun would move a whole bunch during the time. So I have taken a picture of the scene. Um, I could finish this sketch, but I am not going to sit here. My bus leaves in an hour, so I'm not going to sit here for a couple hours to finish this sketch. So I'm just going to get it started here try to catch some of the, oh, by the way, what do I do about people? Are people a, a plus or a minus? What do you think? They're a plus, that's right, that's right. Pedestrians, I'm not going to try to capture exact pedestrians, you know, like that kind of guy. But yes, I, I think the people in the walking down the street are a definite asset or a definite plus in the composition of this drawing. Let me talk about just one more thing real quickly before I go and uh, today I'm doing sketching with graphite on white paper this little trick that I just showed you of starting out light broad and messy strokes light strokes and messy can be done in oil paint color and pencil or charcoal either one okay so in oil paint Sometimes I'll start out drawing with the paint with a light color, like yellow or orange, and then proceed from the lightest color to all the way to the darkest color, which in transparent colors is any kind of purple or dark blue. Uh, in watercolor, you can do very much the same thing. Uh, some of you may know that you can find my watercolor uh, playlist on my YouTube channel there. And I'll start out with watercolor pencils, which is not quite traditional watercolor. But I'll start with, uh, with again, light, like yellow pencils, then proceed to orange and red and purple and blue and so on and so forth. All utilizing the same concept of starting messy, fat, <laughs> and making light lines. Oh, let me give you one more tip that you can do this exact thing if you want to render in charcoal. Do your first early renderings with vine charcoal because it's very, as charcoal goes, it's very light. And then as you proceed, proceed to uh, you know, charcoal pencils, which are much darker. All right, so that concept, starting messy with a fat implement, start fat, <laughs> let me see, what, can I alliterate this? Fat, messy, no, fat, loose, and messy, FLM. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, I'll work on it later. 
Hey, Uncle Sixty, bless you, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. That'll buy me a cup of coffee. Well, that'll buy me a lot more than a cup of coffee. I appreciate it. Um, as I make some, I'll sit around town here for and do a little bit more on this sketch, and I'll post a, a, pro, a progress report as I go along. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to be back soon. Bye bye. I know everything about, except how to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay.